In our study of the gospel according to John, we will examine John chapter 1 from verse 40 to 42. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for. After hearing John the Baptist declared Jesus as the Lamb of God, two of his disciples standing with him at the behest of their teacher followed Jesus. Remember that Jesus alone as the Lamb of God, the monogenes, the Son of God, has the power to draw men unto himself. Otherwise, no man can follow him. In John chapter 6 from verse 44 to 45, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. So the Apostle John and Andrew, the brother of Peter, were the two disciples that left John the Baptist and followed Jesus. In the usual reticence of the Apostle John, he never called himself by name in the Gospel account that he writes. At best, he refers to himself as the Apostle who Jesus loved, or the beloved Apostle. This is why he is also known as John the Beloved. He was one of the famed sons of Zebedee, also known as the sons of Boranages, meaning the sons of thunder. Let me say this, that it is possible to hear the voice of God just as we are doing now and not pay attention to it. Hearing may end in heedlessness even when God Almighty speaks to us. The revelation of God at various times in our lives, the voice of the Holy Spirit may be ignored. It is possible, as often is the case, to hear the voice of God speaking through the scripture, speaking through the ministers of God, and sometimes through the light of our consciences, and yet ignore it. The rumblings and the warnings of the heart may be discarded. It is the Father alone that commands and draws men to himself by his sovereign, elective, and effectual grace. This divine drawing provides the willingness to do the will of the Father. Hence, in John chapter 6, verse 44, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Further, the scripture says, everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. It is one thing to hear, another to learn, and another to come. Here we see the work of the Holy Spirit moving Andrew to introduce his brother Simon Peter to Jesus. So in the fullness of his fresh joy, he went to seek his brother and say to him, We have found the Messiah. 
It is God, the Holy Spirit, that places in the heart of the elect a longing for God. In this longing, an individual cannot be satisfied alone in beholding the lamp of God and the riches of God's grace. Such an individual is also propelled, not of himself, to share this joy of the redeemed with others. The word of God and the gospel of Jesus cannot be privatized. A privatized faith is a dead faith. A believer who presumably comes to saving faith full of the joy of the spirit but hates to see the gospel shared with others, believing that the matter of salvation and faith is a private business. Such a believer can be concluded to be a false convert. It is enough to doubt if such a person has truly been regenerated by God the Holy Spirit. The joy of meeting Christ as the Lamb of God, the Son of God, takes a message out to every ear saying, I have found the Messiah. This proclamation either results in a response of joy in the individual also following to meet the Lamb of God or a response of persecution, rejection, and scorn. Either outcome is the expectation of the believer because in converting a sinner from the wrath of God, we rejoice. Also, in being persecuted and rejected, we rejoice as well. But the word of God must go out to all the world. We have found the Messiah. So Peter follows his brother Andrew to meet Jesus. Admitting Jesus, the scripture says that Jesus looked at him. In John chapter 2, verse 24 to 25, it says, But Jesus did not entrust himself to men, for he knew all men. He did not need any testimony about man, for he knew what was in a man. Jesus is looking intently and steadfastly at Simon Peter. He redefines Peter and gives him a new destiny. When God assigns a new name, it is signaling a realignment of a life, a redefining and changing of destiny. So God the Son looks at Peter and says to him, Formerly you were called Simon, the son of Jonah. Now you shall be called Cephas. Jesus gives Peter a new name. He gives him a new identity in Christ. Despite Peter's flaws and imperfection, Jesus looks at him and calls him a stone. Yet, Peter will deny the Lord three times. Even so, the Lord says to him, You shall be called Cephas. Your identity now in the knowledge of me, Jesus, as the Son of God, is a stone. God is good and merciful. And gracious so wide is his love so deep is his understanding indeed he is beyond finding out he sees us not as who we are in sin and trespasses but as who he has made us become in Christ Jesus so Peter now walking in the redemptive light of Jesus and enjoying the riches of God's grace refers to us who shall believe in Christ in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 as lively stones of men upon which God is building a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ we have found the Messiah this word spoken to Peter resulted in a change of destiny, a redefinition of his life and work. He is no longer just an ordinary fisherman. He has become a living stone, a fisher of men. In the joy of meeting the Lamb of God, Jesus, the Son of God, we declare, we 
have found the Messiah, that the world may know that Jesus is glorious, that the world may hear the voice of the Son of God. I know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed unto his death that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for being conformed unto his death that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for apprehended